Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Here we've got two teams who will look to their running backs to try to control the pace of the game. It's the Buccaneers going up against the Packers. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. We all know this community lives for its Packers, and the green and gold came out of the tunnel a short time ago, and it was loud. We are ready for football. So are they as the Packers get set to match up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, folks. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And as we all know, Charles, offenses today, they're driven by the passing attack. But Larry highlighted in the open a couple of running backs who might just disagree with that assessment. Yeah, and sometimes, occasionally, you get a game where running backs will match each other, kind of carry for carry on opposite teams. But for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get? And can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, ten touchbacks, they're workhorses. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, their offense takes the field led by Ryan Fitzpatrick. Two-game win streak right now for the Buccaneers. They were at 2-6, and six, now 4-6, and six, Charles. Ten-point win over in-state rival Miami last week. And it's one that they sorely needed because they were on a bad losing streak. Quarterback Jameis Winston has been hurt. Ryan Fitzpatrick has jumped in. And they've won the last couple of ball games. How about Fitzy? Getting it done. O.J. Howard, Deshaun Jackson, both catching touchdowns. Yeah, 275 yards, two touchdowns for Fitzy. The old Sailor U. Now the first carry for Doug Martin. And he'll just get back to the line of scrimmage, if that. And with a flag on the field, and that one looks to be in the area where someone was held. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. out of the gun Fitzpatrick and he's gonna go down back at his own five-yard line it's a sack and they weren't in zone coverage they were a man and each man did his job and that looked like vintage old school coverage didn't it man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team they had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other and they just locked people down Second down, throw for Fitzpatrick. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the offense does cover this one, but back inside their own five-yard line. A place like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down.
Here's Brian Anger now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Wow, evasive. Make a miss. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. Brett Hundley and the Green Bay Packers will see what they can do on offense after being shut out last week against Baltimore, 23 to nothing. That was the first time they had been shut out since 2006. And that was against New England, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, that was one. I think Brett Favre left that game early, got hurt. And they got shellacked 35 to nothing. But going back to what happened this past Sunday, Brett Humley stepping in for Aaron Rodgers. That baptism as a young quarterback really occurred with the three interceptions. That takes you right out of the game for your team. Yeah, because two of those picks were on the first couple of drives of the contest, and they got down behind the eight ball early, never recovered. They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's going to take a shot right up. That's caught inside the 20. Touchdown, Packers. Randall Cobb, 56 yards, and the Packers have taken the early lead. And that time, he came out of the slot for that big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, was what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot, know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one route, often against the safety. You like your odds when he's running against the safety. His speed usually wins, and it did on that play. On is Mason Crosby for the point after. And it's good to make it 7-0 Packers. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, a long touchdown pass into the end zone. Crosby on now to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion, guys a little bit I jumpy. Know, but you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and out. And they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Fitzpatrick on first down. It's caught by Mike Evans. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. First carry now for Doug Martin. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. Hey, hey, hey. 
throwing Fitzpatrick. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And let's get a look at the Green Bay defense. Ha ha, Clinton Dix has always had excellent ball skills as a free safety coming out of Alabama, but where I think he's made his best improvement as a run defender. Takes better angles to the ball, tackles better, but has not lost those ball skills that I talked about. Five interceptions in 2016 and went to his first Pro Bowl in his hometown of Orlando. So a third and nine and six defensive backs out there in the dive. Patrolling the passing lanes. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. And an alley to run. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Play fake here on first down. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Second down, Martin. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he's able to hold on to the football. And with a third and 14, we have six defensive backs out there now defensively. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. Now Fitzpatrick hit. It's out. He lost the football. Well, that's a down and distance coach is always talking about trying to avoid, isn't it? I mean, that's third and long, and you just know they're pinning their ears back and coming after him, sometimes even with extra pressure. And he, he knew that. I mean, he, he knew they were coming. He just fumbled it. Yeah, he knew it. The offensive line knew it. Everyone did, yet the pressure was still there, and he ended up coughing it up. Here's Brian Anger now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Here's the rookie from UTEP, Aaron Jones. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level.
throwing Hundley. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Buccaneers have it. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try to move the football. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Fitzpatrick now after the fumble recovery. And Bright has it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. They give to Martin, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. From the gun, Fitzpatrick, it's caught, Humphreys. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. First down and goal, the offense knocking on the door. Now Fitzpatrick. And he will score. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Ryan Fitzpatrick, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. It's never fun for a defense to run on the field knowing that they're having to defend a short field. Just the idea of trying to limit an offense in that position, daunting for a defense. Patrick Murray now for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. A drive there of just four plays, and a nine-yard run on the end of it. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. 
but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Now Hundley, he gets it over the middle to come. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down, because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Let's go! One, nine, cut. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver, and it's second down. And a wide receiver to watch in this offense, certainly Jordy Nelson. And most defenses watch him run past them. Jordy Nelson can run every route in the route tree and take it to the house. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now whistles here, flag down. I think one of the Packer linemen was moving. So that one will be accepted. Still second down. Set up a throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. Right near midfield. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop him? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now a first down carry by Jones. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Let's go! Brian, 38! On play action, they'll throw. Fighting room inside the 40. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. throw it. Got it complete to Rodgers. And he'll go down at the 28. A gain of six there on first. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. 
So the offense readies for a second and four. They go back to the ground with Jones. Now Jones is hit. He lost the football. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Here we go. They'll look to throw. And some room to work. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. to go clock running at a back and forth first quarter of play Come on, let's go. Nine, nine, nine. they'll look to throw now on first down and his throw here is incomplete And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. After Quan Alexander was drafted by Tampa Bay, I asked someone in the organization, where are you going to play him? Outside linebacker? And they said, no, we're actually going to play him in the middle. And that surprised me because of his size. But as they told me, this is a speed game in the NFL now, and there won't be any faster middle linebackers than Quan Alexander, who uses his speed to evade blocks, slip blocks, and run down ball carriers. Second down now after the incompletion. Looking to throw. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter about to get underway with the Packers in possession of the football. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They'll try and run for it with Jones. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. Just a yard, but that's all they needed. And by the slimmest of margins, it'll be first and goal. as they dump it behind the line of scrimmage. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that'll make it second and goal. I don't know if there's any other way to put it, but that play was blown up right from the snap. How about the guys on the defensive side of the ball 
It's almost like they were in the offensive huddle. Yeah, it's one thing to stand him up from that one-yard line, pushing him back to the five, though. Wow. Yeah, I like what you just said there. Not just stand him up, but end up making a play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. On second down, it's Jones. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm. Because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. This the most important of them all, third and goal. They'll try to run it in. It's Williams. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. A great effort there. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Packers have taken the lead. So on third down, they dialed up the draw play. It worked. Got him in the end zone. As one of our colleagues likes to say, calling the draw, everyone wants to yell all the time when the draw doesn't work. Like, what kind of play call was that? But it takes a little bit of fortitude to do that because you may catch him with the element of surprise and hit it. And in this case, they hit it for pay dirt. Extra point try now for Crosby. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. beyond now to kick it away. On the return, it's Ryan Smith. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. They've been faced with a tough test today here. Crowd's been really good. They're struggling. He's struggling. We'll see if they can pick things up. And the crowd has had an impact, and they feel good about that because he's not playing very well, not getting the ball to the right places, not doing the things he normally does. He's got to find a way to turn it around against this hostile group. Yeah, because on the road, don't you look to your quarterback a lot? You have to because you certainly can't look to the crowd to help you. They're there to be against you, so your quarterback has to lead you. And the best way he can do it is to play well. Here's Martin as they begin on the ground. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. First down, Martin, and he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. They run the counter with Martin. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. 
Kidd had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. The Bucks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Fitzpatrick to throw it. And he's got a man. It's the tight end Howard complete. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. They got a completion there, but that's clearly an example of one side happy, the other side not very happy. Defense, very, <laughs> hey, take one or two yards. We're good with that. Offense, you've got to expect to get more on the passing play. Jaquiz Rogers, and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Second down, Fitzpatrick. And break, the tight end's got it. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. down throw for Fitzpatrick gets it to the rookie from Penn State it's Chris Godwin and he is out of bounds inside the 30 11 more yards that go around a first down as well what I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game you've got to be able to do it all of course you got to run fast of course you got to catch the ball but route running savvy and toughness there's a premium for all of that now down Fitzpatrick and inside the 20 before he's brought down back to back 11 yard gains and they've got another first down down here's the run with Martin able to fight for about four yards there to the 13 when you find that kind of yardage you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier and guess what you're gonna go back and tell your offensive coordinator I'd like to keep carrying it thank you his way down right around the 12. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Fitzpatrick from the gun on third down. Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Fitzpatrick and that is caught but he will come down out of bounds says the side judge incomplete Mike Evans the one he was looking for and that'll bring up second down down this close to the goal line first down surprised that wasn't a run I am and you know I'm old school I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it now whistles here before the snap Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. Still second down. A long drive here. Play 12 coming up for the offense. the penalty Martin and he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one it'll be a gain of five and it's going to set up a third and goal and Brad, they went to a nickel defense and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone the sidelines as extra defenders and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run this offense two for two on third downs on this drive this is the most important of them all. Third and goal. On the ground, Rodgers. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That will make it fourth down after a loss of one. Now this feels like old school football because this has turned into a good old-fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? Patrick Murray now on for the field goal. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. And Murray's kick is up and good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Boy, oh, shifts past him. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out is Brett Hundley and the rest of the offense as they'll take over here. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. They go play action here on first down. And he'll take this back down inside the 20. This is so 
such a good read defensively. They know that this offense is going to try to get the ball to their playmaker in space. So what do they do? They crowd him and send bodies at him. And this one winds up being intercepted. And we shift to spotlighting Mike Evans. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts, one of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. And off comes to Martin. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. They go play action. Fitzpatrick. Quick hitter here. It's complete. This carry with the extra effort is going to get him stopped up just shy of the 10. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Bucks on third down. They've hit four of seven. Here it's third and three. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. Well, a good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Amon Brooks able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. He made his first attempt, this from 45. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We're back to Lambeau following these words. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He made his first attempt, this from 45. And his kick is good, not by much. It was leaking oil in the end, but he tucks it in the bottom right corner. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So after the pick, they can't capitalize for six, but they do get three. And I know in this situation, most of us want to focus on the offense. You know what side of the ball I played on. Let's give that defense a lot of credit, taking it over in a sudden change situation and shutting them down.
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out is Brett Hundley and the rest of the offense as they'll take over here. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see he's looked pretty good to this point. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Ready now for second and nine. Throwing Hundley. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. a gain of six that time and it moves the chains as well and Brandon from our time in college football where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree one thing they did learn find open areas find soft spots and set up and catch the ball and I think we just saw that there yeah we saw that indeed picking up the first here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So here we go, first and 10 now. He'll drop to throw. And an alley to run. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock.
Now Hundley. A dump underneath to Jones. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident keep flinging it. I'll just figure there's something wrong with the football. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he slides to avoid the hit. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. and We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Now Mason Crosby for the Packers field goal try. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost, and that'll move their lead up to four now. It's a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they get the field goal near the end of the first half to expand that lead. Now that's got to feel good, but they can't let up. Now on the kickoff, they've got to make sure they don't give up a big return or big yardage to set up the other team for one last chance to score themselves. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This will be fielded at the 8. <laughs> and he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Start the drive with Martin. And he powers his way up past the 30. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. Final play of the half, Fitzpatrick. And this will be incomplete. One second left to go. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Bucks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. A final shot before break. Fitzpatrick. 
And this one is incomplete. So we're at halftime here at Lambeau with the Packers taking the lead to the break. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Packers are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Buccaneers won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, comes wide open on the deep pass. And it ends up working for a touchdown. Now following the fumble, Fitzpatrick's got it off the left side here, and he'll go in for the score. As that'll tie the score at seven all. Now third and eight, Williams has got it on the run, and he'd go in for the eight yard touchdown. That puts them up by a touchdown. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Set to return, this is Jeff Janis. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Try and start this drive in the air. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Well, selfishly, I'm happy for that incompletion because I wanted to discuss Philadelphia's situation this last week. Jake Elliott, kicker, unfortunately got hurt. They went for two. They went for it on fourth down. And who was doing the kickoffs for them? Camus Grugier Hill, who's a backup outside linebacker. The guy that, that can flat out run and plays well on special teams. But who knew? He had a big leg, a big foot on him as well. So normally you would think that the punter would take over the duties. But the motion of the, of the leg swing is different. I don't think the Eagles wanted to mess with Donnie Jones' leg swing as a punter. They'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Packers on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Come on, let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They'll drop to throw. His throw incomplete. And Charles, a league-wide story that kind of got lost in the shuffle last week as we get a second here after that incompletion was that Tom Brady and the Patriots, they played at Denver one two weeks ago, and then they actually stayed in Colorado Springs for the week to train for the altitude in Mexico City. Yeah, it's really smart, isn't it? Because they couldn't really do it ahead of time with the Denver game. But afterwards, rather than going back home and having to acclimate and reacclimate. They just said, okay, we're going to stay at altitude and we'll be ready to go for Mexico City. 
If they trained there at the Air Force Academy near Colorado Springs, I think that worked out quite well. Yeah, they won 33 to 8, and a lot of people think Mexico City. They think warm weather. They don't think altitude, but that's that's what it is down there. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact, able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. On now is the Packers punter, as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing Fitzpatrick. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll get him down here at the 23. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They run. Martin. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The Bucks on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This time it's third and three. They'll run it. Here's Martin, and he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. He'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They'll try to throw here, Fitzpatrick. That's complete, middle of the field to Humphreys. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The Bucks on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This will be third and five. Here's Fitzpatrick. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard. And it's fourth. He dialed up the screen pass on third down. And for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together. And they had a chance to pick up a first down. But the defense got there and finished it off. Here's
Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. This is taken at about the 14. That'll wind up being a 50-yard punt, though they do get 10 back on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Looks for Nelson, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Quan Alexander, and he's able to get it back to right around the 27. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They were forced to punt last time. Now I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And a great spot to start this drive from here. They try to fire up the running game with Martin. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They run it again with Martin, and he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run, and at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Another tote for the workhorse, Martin. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That was a really nice play, being able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Fitzpatrick now on second down. Floating one incomplete. The Bucks on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and nine. Now Fitzpatrick. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the left hash, a chip shot here.
And Murray's kick is up and good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So make it three field goals for him now. And this last one tightens things up a bit. And I know that offense is on the sideline right about now, checking out the tablets and saying, man, we let a good chance slip away there. We've got to start finishing some of these drives. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling. Because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Just one yard to go here on second down. Here we go. Grand 38. Grand 38. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Adams. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. It's lining up first and ten. Come on, let's go. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. William Golston. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. tackle but couldn't create much space down just beyond the 35 it'll be a two yard gain and they're going to be staring at a third and long here The Packers on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and 17. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. 
but they don't get it. And now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. On now is the Packers punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Bucks now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> you put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about <laughs> <Toe> that. <bashed. laughs> Super toe. <laughs> On first and ten, Fitzpatrick out to the left there and complete to Howard. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Here's Martin. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Fitzpatrick now. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it, and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fielded just inside the 20. Oh, and now he bowls him over. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? They go play action here on first down. Let's it fly. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Touchdown, Packers. Randall Cobb, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Packers add on to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Now Crosby for the point after. And with that, the lead is up to eight. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown.
Crosby on now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. now Fitzpatrick and incomplete on the deep ball they have not gotten him going at all tried to spark something there with a longer throw unable to complete it but you have to keep trying he's one of their best playmakers no matter what it says on the scoreboard you're always trying to get him the football unable to connect on the first down pass play now it's second down takes it up to the 40 and a nice carry there of 15 yards and that is going to do it for this third quarter of action we'll return with more after this you're watching the NFL on EA Sports back now at Lambeau it's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. So it'll be first down here after the run. Again, it's Martin, and he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. A first down throw for Fitzpatrick. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Fitzpatrick on first down. And an alley to run. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll make it second and short. readies for a second and one. Now whistles here before the snap. Looked like one of the Bucks may have moved. 
The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Carry number 20 here for Martin. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. And a first carry here for Charles Sims. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a yard on the run there. That's going to bring us to a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football. And they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bucks try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Packers' D comes up with a big stop. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. Doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Throwing Hundley. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They'll set up a throw. Caught by Nelson left side. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. to Jones and his rough afternoon continues he's going nowhere again no gain on the play there second down run blitz there defensively something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter I think we'll see a lot of it and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz pass blitz you're just trying to get to the quarterback you're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground in a run blitz you're actually trying to cover up gaps trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football They'll go again to Jones. Powers through him. And he's got some space here. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 38 yards on the scamper there. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Come on, let's go. They'll hand it off now. Williams down to the 25. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking go. for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third and one. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. The Packers on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. It'll wind up being stopped for no gain, and it'll lead to a fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Crosby puts it through, and that will bump the lead up to 11. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. field goal now Crosby will do the kickoff duties fielded about a yard deep and he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again and on that last drive Went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened there. you think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. And down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again.
Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Second down, Fitzpatrick. Call it a one-yard gain of the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. Now Fitzpatrick. It's caught. Humphreys. It's a gain of 11, but they're still well short. It's fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. The Bucks try it on fourth down to come up empty. And the Packers are going to get the football back in excellent field position. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Here we go. One, two, three. Now Hundley. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. And down inside the 15, he goes. A solid gain of 15 yards, and the sticks move. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. Take it down inside the 10. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Back to throw. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It'll be a gain of four. And that is going to set up a third and one. The Packers on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They're going to look to throw. And it's a touchdown for the Packers. Point try now for Crosby. And the lead is up to 18 now.
So that drive, four plays. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. on now to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now the Buccaneers offense gets ready to head back onto the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. It's Patrick now to throw on first down. They set up the screen to Martin. And now running right through it. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Second down now after the pass completion. Throwing Fitzpatrick. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. down Fitzpatrick and a scary incompletion almost picked off it would have been their first INT of the game instead second down Complete pass brings up second down. Throwing again. Fitzpatrick drops it off to Martin. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. To the air again, Fitzpatrick. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. 
to throw is Fitzpatrick. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Packers are going to get the football back in excellent field position. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. And as we peer at the numbers, he got off to a struggling start, but since then really found his rhythm. And I think that comes together with not just the halftime adjustments, but just that quiet confidence, if you just keep doing the things you've been working on, eventually there will be creases. You know, find those gaps in the defense, keep working on them, and maybe what didn't happen very well for you in the beginning of the game, it starts to open up as the game moves on. A give to Jones. Space to run past the 20. Touchdown, Packers! A great play there, 35 yards, and the Packers add six to their lead. Well, pardon me, that was another explosive run, and one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit, but for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt, you need that difference maker lugging the rock. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Well, I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score, but it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. Crosby on now to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. First down, Fitzpatrick. He gets it to Humphreys. The ball comes out, and the Packers pick it up. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. All right? And sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about your routine stays the same. Everything's familiar. You feel right going into the game, and they translated that into a win. They did indeed. They protected the home field, and now the final stages. On the counter, here's Jones. And past the 30, down to about the 27. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. 
They did that plus three. Again, it's Jones. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop it behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Yeah, let me puff out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. The Packers on third down. Six conversions and nine tries. They've done a great job of picking these up. This is third and four. Now back to throw. He's got his target. It's Cobb. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Packers are winners here as we say so long from Lambeau.